If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for Smart Zone controllers based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I will provide you a demonstration on how to manage clients within the Smart Zone controller. So let's get started. I have already logged into the Smart Zone instance using a super admin account. We can observe that this is a high scale instance and is a 5.2 Smart Zone release. Under the grouping in the middle, we see that there are a few partner domains and subdomains already configured. Clicking on the wireless LANs and on the first partner domain, we can see there are three wireless LANs configured, each providing a different wireless LAN service type. Partner 1 EAP is providing an 802.1x authentication access, requiring clients to authenticate against a RADIUS service. The next is the Partner 1 Guest, where the authentication uses an internal Guest Pass authorization process within SmartZone. Partner 1 PSK is providing a simple pre-shared key connection with an encryption option WPA2 requiring a client to simply put in a key that is provided to them. When we navigate to the clients, then wireless clients, and then click on the Partner 1 domain, we can see we have three clients connected. Each are connected to a different wireless LAN, therefore they all have gone through a different process to be authenticated. When we click on each client, you can see that authentication method was used allowing the user access. This one required 802.1x credentials for access and is currently authorized. You can also see the username that was used to authenticate the device as well. The next, which is the iPhone, we can see that it used a standard wireless LAN service and authorized because the pre-shared key that was provided was correct. Note that the username is not populated due to authentication method other than the PSK. The last, which is a PC, is authorized by the use of a guest pass for guest access for its authentication method. We can see the guest pass that it used was named James and was authorized by providing the correct guest pass code. If at any time we want to control our user's current connection, we can select the client and then we have three options at the top, which are deauthorize, block, or disconnect. We can simply click on the disconnect and we will remove the user from the wireless LAN. This will behave differently depending on the authorization method and wireless LAN the user is connected to. If we use this on a user that is authenticated using PSK, like we did here, when we disconnect them, the device will simply reconnect and they will become authorized again. To keep this user from reconnecting again and again, we have the option to block them, which we will discuss in a moment. The Deauthorize button is an option for users connecting to a Whisper, Guest Access, or Web Authentication wireless LAN. If you attempt to deauthorize a client that is not connected using one of these methods, you will receive a pop-up disallowing the process. If you need to keep the client from connecting again, you can use the block option as well. However, if we use the deauthorize button on other wireless LANs that are capable of this service, we will remove any cached or grace period value for that client and require them to reauthenticate to the service. It is important to note that although we have selected the deauthorize option, we did not remove them from the wireless LAN, but rather we just required them to authenticate again when they attempt to reconnect. To remove the client, we will then need to click on the disconnect, which will remove them from the wireless LAN. When they return, we will see that they are unauthorized and they will need to re-enter their credentials to be authenticated to this service. The last button we see is the block button. This, unlike the other services, is more permanent removal of a client because when the button is used, they are added to a block list and they will not be able to reconnect. 
When this is used, it will create a pop-up that allows for a note or description for the reason for the block listing. Once blocked, the client will be removed from the wireless LAN and will not allow to rejoin. When we navigate to the Services and Profiles Access Control Block Client list, we can see that the client is listed there. As stated, the user is placed into a blocked client list, which they will remain on until you manually remove them from the list. And you can remove them by simply clicking on the client and press delete. Once the user is removed, they will have the ability to reconnect again. Note that this did not affect their grace period or authentication so if the user can potentially reconnect as authorized without having to re-authenticate. The blocked process simply identifies the MAC address of the device and denies its ability to connect and does not affect its authentication. Thank you for taking the time to watch this demonstration.